Hey everyone, a while back, a viewer had a fun idea for me to go over my top 10 favorite classic superhero costume. So we're going to be looking specifically at costumes that usually nail it right out of the gate. Superheroes that had outfits so well designed on their first appearance that they haven't changed much over the years. Or, for whatever reason, particularly struck a chord with the character in their initial design that really set the tone for what that character would represent in the years to come. Before we get into this, be sure to subscribe and check out our other top 10 videos, including this whole collection of costumed related top 10s. Number 10, Captain America. First up is one straight out of the 1940s I think is a solid choice. While Captain America's outfit has certainly been modified over the years from its initial appearance, creators Joe Simon and Jack Kirby really got to the core of this character's idea right off the bat. He instantly looks memorable, and by relying on the patterns and colors of the American flag, there's a certain timeless quality to even the earliest iteration of Captain America's outfit. It feels fun and distinct to the identity of this particular superhero. While certainly other characters have done this before and since, notably Wonder Woman, who premiered only a month before Captain America, the early designs of Steve Rogers really stand out across comic book history, as an early example of a superhero featuring an excellent design. And it was done so immediately upon the character's release, and is the sort of timeless legend you can expect for most of this top 10. The only reason he isn't ranked higher is that yes, over time it does feel like this solid design was gradually improved upon. I do like some of the later costumes and shields used for Captain America, even if there will always be a place in my heart for the one that started it all. Number 9, Wonder Woman. Out of DC's Trinity, while I found Batman and Superman's original costumes needed a lot of modifications before they fully resembled the outfits the two characters are better known for, even during the golden age of comics, Wonder Woman has pretty much always been drawn pretty consistently and has always looked good at the same time. While I'm certainly not going to pretend that her costume hasn't changed over the years, virtually Every Wonder Woman costume in history is basically just a variation of the original. As designed by William Moulton Marston, his wife Elizabeth, and illustrator H.G. Peter. So while the articles of clothing have certainly evolved away from the skirt and explored all sorts of other ideas including various combinations of leotards, leather jackets, and pants, the color scheme and general design of the outfits remain very consistent with what was introduced in these early days. I chalk that up to how forward-thinking the Marstons feel with their general design behind this character and politics overall. Diana was specifically modeled after the more progressive woman that started emerging in America in the 1920s and 30s, including Elizabeth and William's polyamorous partner Olive Byrne. That the Marstons live some kind of totally awesome lifestyle that even today would break the minds of your average American citizen. I think has a lot to do with the staying power of Wonder Woman. A comparable character like Batman, and a lot has changed for that character, even in just the design of his costume. Wonder Woman, on the other hand, feels a lot more developed and ready to go as a concept right from the beginning, and has always sort of been a natural choice for me to include in this top 10 because of it. While, like Captain America, the original is not my favorite Wonder Woman costume ever, it is absolutely one of the best examples of a character who was well designed from the start, and memorable from the very beginning of this character's life. Number 8, Storm. Storm dates back to 1975, considerably newer than Wonder Woman's 1940, but still well within our range of what I think can be fairly considered a classic character. Created by Len Wein and David Cockrum, while once again, Storm's original costume isn't my all-time favorite Storm costume, it does work remarkably well, and like Wonder Woman, set the tone for every version of the costume that would follow. It's funny because when you look at the costume itself, all on its own, it doesn't look like much. One could argue it isn't really much more than a set of lingerie out of context. But in context, and more explicitly the way David Cockrum drew this character, that's not how I read or view this costume. So maybe I'm going to be a little out of lock step with ranking her so high, but when I look at this costume, I see power. One of the most powerful mutants to have ever emerged by this time in X-Men history. 
a character who faced down adversity time and time again, only to emerge as one of the X-Men's most consistently competent and capable leaders. With a flowing cape that adds to the visual sense of her abilities, and even the general sense of her powers, this is a character once worshipped as a god, and it always felt to me like that exists in her design. It all comes down to Cockrum, responsible for everything from the cave to Storm's characteristic white hair, the latter of which is something he had to fight for. Marvel was worried the white hair would make her look old, but because Storm is one of the best designed characters in Marvel history, and this was true from her initial appearance, that never really was the case. Including her, to me, was a very easy choice. Number 7. The Fantastic Four the classic blue matching outfits of the Fantastic Four were an easy choice for me in this top 10, thanks to the enduring nature of these costumes. With Stanley as the writer, Jack Kirby created a memorable set of outfits for a run that heralded the dawn of so many things that remained core to Marvel's identity to date. These costumes remain one of the key aspects of the team and what gets recognized when people look at them. It shouldn't be much of a surprise to see at least something from Jack Kirby show up a couple of times here, given that he's one of the most influential and important artists in all of comic book history. But still, this was a competitive list, and it's a cool achievement for a team to get a spot here to begin with. While many other superhero teams don't really have a unified outfit or design to them, the Fantastic Four do and always have. And it works very well with the team, kind of being a core essential part of their identity as a family and what sort of separates them out from the average superhero team. Generally, attempts to truly deviate from the costumes as originally designed by Jack Kirby have often been abandoned or failed entirely, speaking to how well these costumes worked and how little any other innovation has ever been needed for the Fantastic Four. Number 6 Black Panther. Next up is yet another character designed by the absolute titan of this top 10, Jack Kirby. It is however interesting that from here on out, Kirby wound up being effectively locked out of the top 5 in this video. I didn't do that on purpose, it just feels like as deeply influential as Kirby is as a designer, it only goes so far. Steve Ditko, I think, best illustrated this limitation to Kirby, and shows how other artists were able to sort of further innovate things beyond his ideas. But don't get me wrong, we shouldn't underestimate how impressive Jack Kirby is. Not only did he rightfully take over just about half of this top 10 video, but he also had a ton of other characters who were serious contenders in competition with being included. But I think the design that Kirby did best in terms of his initial design for the costume, is Black Panther. Far less developed than the character we think of today, T'Challa had a long way to go from his first appearance. However, the visual design of the character was pretty firmly ready to go right from the start. While it could be argued that donning a character all in black is a very obvious and simple design, nobody quite showcases that look as well as Black Panther does. The little extra details surrounding Black Panther mean he really showcases this look better than any other superhero or character within the world of comics. It probably has a lot to do with the fact that Black Panthers, the animal species, look cool as hell to begin with, so it isn't very hard to make a cool costume based on the animal. That sort of idea had actually already been explored in comics before on DC's side of things, but when you throw in Jack Kirby's fine detail-oriented work, and sleek, simplified design, we suddenly have one of the best costumes in comic book history. Number 5. The Punisher Don't worry guys, though this makes for Marvel's third entry in a row, DC still has a couple aces up their sleeves in terms of some high-ranking costumes still to be featured in this video. But before we get to that, we need to talk about The Punisher, originally conceived of by Jerry Conway, who had a lot to do with the design of this character. Conway was inspired by this book series called The Executioner, which featured a Vietnam veteran becoming, well, this vigilante killer. John Romita Sr. took Conway's initial design and modified it into what we know today. Stanley named the character, and then, in a book penciled by Ron Andrew, the Punisher was introduced to the world. This character has very rarely strayed from his initial design by Conway and Romita. 
generally only with slight modifications to the suit as sensibilities change over the years. All the while, the core central thesis of this design remains the same. So we have this dude with a big skull on his chest otherwise dressed in black. There really isn't a lot else to it, and that's what makes it so effective. Much like Black Panther or really any other costume featured in this video, simple designs are often what gets remembered and what can be reliably depicted over the years. So it's often the simple and sleek designs, carefully crafted from the beginning, that found success in this particular top 10. The Punisher is a prime example of that, one of the first I thought of when picking out my choices for this video, and one that persisted throughout the ranking process. Number 4. The Flash, Jay Garrick As promised, it's time to give DC some love, with a classic costume I really like. In the world of the Golden Age, a lot of revision was clearly needed for a number of heroes before they were truly realized as all they could be. Many, like Green Lantern, I considered, but didn't quite feel fully evolved until their Silver Age counterparts came into prominence. Though I like Barry Allen's iteration of the Flash costume, and it's certainly closer to what most people think of today. At its core, the idea of the Flash costume is still well represented with the earliest existing design of Jay Garrick. Created by Gardner Fox and Harry Lampert in 1940, much of what makes the Flash great was present in the first designs of this character. Not only does it feature the iconic red coloring and lightning bolts, but it also has the added detail of the fact that Jay wears his father's World War I helmet as part of this costume. It's a very small little bit of trivia, but enough to give this costume a little bit of an edge over many others when talking about these classic costumes. It adds something to Jay's character in and of itself, not only firmly establishing his age and the time period from which Jay grew up in, but also speaks to what kind of person Garrick is, and his relationship with his father. Though these details were established long after his introduction, with that helmet just initially being part of a costume meant to represent the Roman god Mercury, because those details were there from the start, it's become an iconic part of Jay's character, gained its own sense of meaning over time, and is a key part of why I chose to rank it at number 4. Number 3, Black Canary. Everything about Black Canary's outfit I find fascinating. It really looks like the sort of outfit born right out of the Silver Age, laid on in the game, with superhero content getting increasingly more mature in its content and even sense of sexuality. The jacket and fishnet stockings feel remarkably out of place with virtually any Golden Age superhero, and yet, in 1947, Robert Kangler and Carmine Infantino created Dinah Drake, a character that in the world of superheroes fell decades ahead. Black Canary sometimes gets crap for the stockings to day, and the costume often feels unfairly maligned when people ignore not only how damn cool and polished the costume was right on its premiere, but how it also represents a certain freedom in Black Canary characters to express their own sexuality. She looks fantastic and pretty much always has since the beginning. And even though this was the first iteration of the superhero, one that was also changed for the Silver Age, Black Canary has remained remarkably consistent across all of this, mostly because Carmine Infantino's design was pretty much perfect from the beginning. It is so cool, and picking it as one of my favorites was an easy, easy choice. Number 2. Nightcrawler Our top two contenders are in many ways no-brainers. I have a hard time imagining someone truly objecting to a costume like this being included in a top 10 video like this. Because this costume is practically essential to a character like Nightcrawler. Just like Storm, Kurt Wagner was designed by Len Wein as writer, with artist David Cockrum making the impressive design, back in 1975 as part of that deeply influential Giant Size X-Men book. And what really stands out about this costume is, just like some of the best ones we've talked about so far, Nightcrawler's hints at his own history a little bit, as it evokes his time growing up in a circus. The coloring and design of this particular outfit has been a huge part of Kurt's character in the years following, and rightfully so. Though other outfits have been played with and toyed over the years, it's never really been taken seriously. Those were all fun alternate outfits or brief ideas to be explored. 
as it's this costume people think of when it comes to Nightcrawler's character and remains my favorite iteration of any Nightcrawler outfit. Number 1. Spider-Man And our second no-brainer comes to top out our list, but it is well deserved. Spider-Man was written by Stan Lee, but his design really comes down to Steve Ditko. And as I talked about earlier, Ditko himself argued in the past that he, more than anyone else, created Spider-Man, in a way that he, unlike anyone else around at the time, did so uniquely. And I have to say he makes a compelling case. You look at Ditko's idea of what Jack Kirby would have done for Spider-Man, and I can see why Ditko is so important in Spider-Man history. This is a character who wasn't to be big or bulky, but slim, young, and always the underdog in pretty much any given fight. The webbing that patterns this costume would never be all that simple for an artist compared to most other superheroes around at the time, so Spider-Man would pretty much always require a certain labor of love from its artists. The big, lens-like eyes are clearly meant to remind us a bit of the origin of Peter's powers, but also serve as a reminder of his skills and technology. And it all just comes together in this design with a lot more detail than the average superhero from the 1960s, yet still so perfectly simple that it just looks awesome over and over and over and over and over again in different contexts and media with graphics and design technology changing over the years and still that design by Ditko looks great every time. I've laid a lot of credit at the feet of people like Jack Kirby and David Cockrum for this video and I would argue rightfully so, they are excellent artists. But it should never be understated how powerful and important of an artist Ditko was during the earliest days of Marvel, or how much the company owes to him developing it into the cultural force it is today. But that design of Spider-Man, in my opinion, is the best design of a superhero to date. So that's it. I uh, hope you guys like this video. It's going to be a really subjective kind of video in terms of people's opinions and stuff, but I do think I made a pretty solid argument for at least some of these costumes today. Hopefully so. Uh, let me know if I did or not in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time on Comic Island.